Two reactors are under inspection to determine whether they can still be used. Officials with Kansai Electric Power Company invited the media to see how the inspection process is going at their Takahama plant. Workers remotely controlled an ultrasonic device in a reactor to examine the interior of its containment vessel. Last year, the government limited the operational lifespan of nuclear reactors to 40 years in principle. Operators must decide whether to decommission their aging reactors or apply permission to extend their lifespans. They would need special inspections to assess how the facility is deteriorated. Seven reactors across Japan have been in use for around four decades. Regulators have taken a step towards allowing a nuclear plant to resume operations. Our draft assessment says two reactors at the Takahama plant in Fukui Prefecture meet government regulations. The plant is the second in Japan to clear this hurdle. Officials at the Nuclear Regulation Authority compiled the draft assessment. They looked at safety measures for the number three and four reactors. They determined they meet government regulations introduced after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster three years ago. The plant is operated by Kansai Electric Power Company. Officials there have taken measures to enable the reactors to withstand stronger earthquakes and taller tsunami. They also installed equipment to prepare for the possibility of a severe nuclear accident. Improving the safety of nuclear plants is never-ending. I urge the operator to take the initiative in making sufficient efforts and investments to ensure the safety of the number three and four reactors at the Takahama power plant. The Nuclear Regulation Authority will invite comments from the public on the draft over 30 days before officially adopting the document. The operator still needs to get approval on equipment design and pass inspections, and local leaders must give their consent before the plant can go online, making a restart unlikely before spring. All of Japan's nuclear reactors are now offline. Officials with a Japanese power company have applied to have the new Oma nuclear plant screened by the government. Their application is the first for a facility under construction since new regulations took effect in July last year. Senior representatives of Electric Power Development, or J-Power, submitted their application to the Nuclear Regulation Authority. The facility in northern Japan will be the world's first commercial plant with a reactor that operates solely on MOX fuel. That's a mixture of plutonium extracted from spent nuclear fuel and uranium. Construction in Oma town was suspended after the Fukushima accident in 2011 and resumed in October 2012. City of Hakodate officials filed for a court injunction in April to halt the plant's constru construction. Hakodate lies to the north across the strait and is located within 30 kilometers of the facility. They say their community could suffer extensive damage if an accident occurred. They say it's regrettable that J-Power is not addressing the concerns of local residents and pushing ahead with procedures to start the plant. All 48 reactors in Japan are currently offline, but utilities have filed screening applications for 21 reactors. The strongest winter storm in years is aiming for the northern island of Japan. Our meteorologist Sakamori joins us for the details. Saka. Yes, the most powerful system in years will likely hit Hokkaido. Blizzard conditions will happen in the area. We're looking at strong winds of about 180 kilometers per hour. This is as strong as a typhoon, and that will be combined with very high waves up to 10 meters. So coastal flooding is likely to happen across Hokkaido. Now, passengers on a flight from South Korea to the U.S. had an unplanned stopover in Japan after turbulence tossed their plane about in the skies. The rocky ride ended at Narita Airport, but not before 12 people were hurt. <laughs> Officials with Japan's Transport Ministry say the crew of flight AA280 reported the turbulence to air controllers late Tuesday. The plane touched down at Narita after midnight with more than 250 passengers and crew on board. <laughs> It lasted for about maybe 30, 45 seconds, and it was very sudden. Uh, it was like a little bump, and then there was a really big one where like, all of my drinks went up and hit the ceiling, food went flying, and it was really bad. I've flown millions of miles. This is the worst I've ever seen. 
Transport Ministry officials have quoted the pilot as saying the plane hit severe turbulence for about 10 minutes. The jet was at an altitude of 8,000 meters bound for Dallas. Low pressure is to blame for the bumpy flight. The system is currently moving over northern Japan. People in Hokkaido have seen heavy snow since Tuesday morning, and now they are dealing with a blizzard. Authorities in the region have cancelled more than 300 flights. Hitachi has decided to set up a power grid joint venture with a leading Swiss heavy electric machinery firm. Hitachi anticipates that demand in the domestic power grid business will increase with the progress of industry liberalization and the separation of power generation and power distribution. Executives of Hitachi and ABB announced that they will set up a new firm in Tokyo for technology used for transmitting electricity. Hitachi will take an equity interest of 51% and the ABB 49% in the joint venture to be launched next April. They plan to share their expertise to develop an efficient electrical power transmission system and to supply related equipment. Hitachi executives have set a target of raising sales from the electrical power transmission business to about $1.7 billion by fiscal 2020. of new condominiums put on sale in the greater Tokyo area in November fell from the previous year. It's the 10th consecutive year-on-year -year decline. The Real Estate Economic Institute says about 3,300 units came on the market in Tokyo and three neighboring prefectures last month. That's down a third from a year ago. Researchers blame the lingering effects of the consumption tax hike in April and rising condo prices. They say higher labor costs and other construction expenses are behind the trend. Sales of luxury condos in central Tokyo remain relatively solid, but those in the suburbs are struggling to find buyers. <laughs> Japan's leaders are in a race against time. The proportion of elderly is increasing faster than any other country, and the birth rate remains low. Since 2007, the number of deaths each year has outpaced the number of births. Now, with fewer children, schools are closing across Japan, and that's having a big impact on local communities, even in Tokyo. NHK World's Masashi Kato reports. <laughs> More than 5,000 public schools have shuttered across Japan in the past decade. Education ministry officials say the number of primary school kids fell this year by 600,000. It's the same story in Tokyo. More than 240 schools have closed in the past decade in this city. Many communities are fighting the closures. This primary school in the city of Adachi in eastern Tokyo is scheduled to close in March. All the students will have to transfer to a neighboring school. Yuka Ogasawara has a daughter in the fourth grade. The city's decision means her daughter has to walk further to school on busy roads. The new school is close to the train station. The roads are narrow and traffic is heavy. It's not safe for her. And she's really sad that she could no longer go to school with her friends. But we didn't have much choice. Shop owners say the closure of the school will also make things harder for local businesses. Tomotaka Yamada is a member of the local merchants association. He says Toy and stationery shops are among the businesses suffering. The community will die when the children are gone. If we do not hear their voices, we will lose our joy and sense of living in a community. Not only children and local stores are affected by the school's closure. It has a big impact on the disaster prevention programs in this high-density downtown area. 
People use primary schools as evacuation centers during disasters, such as earthquakes. City officials are working to find alternative venues, but many residents are unhappy with the inconvenience. Akira Nakadai will have to walk 10 more minutes to get to the closest evacuation center. He wonders whether his 84-year-old mother will be able to make it there. I am really scared. If there's nowhere for me to go, I will become a disaster refugee. Nakadai has filed a lawsuit demanding that the city of Adachi keep the school open. We will only realize the impact of this decision when a disaster happens. Closing the school just because there are fewer kids will also affect the function of evacuation centers. Professor Masaki Hayo is an expert in population studies and education policy. He says schools are vital for maintaining local social infrastructure. Officials should include schools in city plans because they are used as evacuation centers and play a central role in local economies. Otherwise, we cannot sustain our communities as the population shrinks. Many communities around Japan face the same demographic challenge as this Tokyo neighborhood. Local people and officials are struggling to deal with the nation's shrinking population. Masashikato, NHK World, Tokyo. Officials from Japan's space agency are keen to publicize what their latest satellite has accomplished, and they're giving people a chance to enjoy some food that is literally out of this world. Officials at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, and local business people sponsored a promotional event in the city of Niigata on the Sea of Japan coast. JAXA launched a rocket carrying an Earth observation satellite called Daichi-2. It uses radar to monitor disaster damage and geological conditions from an altitude of more than 600 kilometers. JAXA officials are showing models of nine satellites and pictures of 31 different types of space food. Visitors can taste a curry and rice dish enjoyed by astronauts. The curry was delicious. I hope the event will make people more familiar with satellites and space activities. Visitors can see high-resolution color images of Niigata taken by the satellite.